Welcome to the Crazy Canuck Trucking Podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Bridget, the Size Matters Dakotan. I can't be here today to enjoy the fun of our guest, but wanted to remind you all, reach out to us on any of our social media platforms and the Crazy Canuck Trucking at gmail.com. You can find us anywhere using Crazy Canuck Trucking. I hope that my co-host, Crazy Canuck Dave, has a wonderful interview lined up for us today because I get to listen and enjoy just as much as you do. Thank you, Size Matters. Good to see everybody back again. I appreciate everybody following along and liking and commenting on our stuff. Today, we are just going to get right to it. We have a Swedish race car driver who races in uh, WTCR in Europe, and she is a three-time Swedish champion and has a bunch of podium finishes. She's uh, an amazing lady who is, uh, knows how to drive very fast and corner really good. How are you doing today, Jess? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> so for, uh, because I don't know if I'll get your last name pronounced properly, how about you tell us all, what is your name, who you are, what you do? That way we can get it all directly from you. Okay, uh, my name is Jessica Beckman, but they call me Beckman in, in international name because they don't know how to pronounce the A. But yeah, I'm, it's Beckman in Swedish, so I'm 23 years old from Sweden. I live up in the north of Sweden called Boden. It's like 1,000 kilometers up from Stockholm, so it's quite long up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I race in WTCR this year. It's like the World Championship in touring cars. So I'm the first female driver to race in the World Championship. So I'm very happy about that. And uh, I started racing in 2006 in karting. So, and then I, I have raced for like 12 years in karting. And then I moved up to Rallycross 2017. And then I swapped again to racing in 2018. So I, I have driven in kind a lot of championships, but mostly in TCR Europe. But now this year I'm in WTCR. Wow. So the first, first woman to race in WTCR. Yes, That's, exactly. Uh, and how, how is your season going so far? Uh, we are struggling quite a lot with the cars because we have new cars this, this year. So it's a completely new kind of car. It's a Hyundai car. So we had driven Hyundai for two years, but now this year is like a new model. So we are struggling quite a lot to be honest, to get like the right settings in the car. So for the moment, it's not going very well. But now last weekend, I I drove one race back home in Sweden, but that time in an Audi, and then I was second. So I know I can still drive. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. we, uh, we talk a lot about, or try to talk a fair bit about uh, mental health and uh, the challenges of trying to overcome different things. What, what are you doing? You know, you say you're, you're having a season that isn't as good as you want it to be. So what do you do to help yourself prepare for that? Uh, I work since 2018, I work with a mental trainer. So normally I talk, talk to him a lot when I'm like preparing for a race to get like all the mindsets correctly. And then if I feel like I'm struggling uh, with the mental, then I normally talk to him. So, but right now I've talked to him quite a lot since 2018. So I really, I know like how to work with myself if I'm struggling a lot. So yeah, it for sure helps me. Is that a common thing for the race car drivers in your in your area to have a mental coach like that? I don't think everyone has it, but for, for me, it has for sure helped since you don't really think about it when you don't haven't used it. But then when you, when you talk to a mental trainer, you realize how, how, how good it is for you. So 
I think some drivers has it and some drivers maybe doesn't have it. Is there is there one thing you can look back on and something that you find that really helps you? Um, something that your mental coach has told you? Or what, what kind of strategy do you find is always like your go-to help? You know, what, what is what is something that really helps you the most? We talk a lot about folk, like... I think you think about a lot of things all the time, but sometimes it's popping up a lot of things in your head, but you should not take them like seriously. So that's like one thing that it always tells me, like it will always pop up a lot of different things in your head. But if it's like negative things, you should not like take them seriously. And then that is one thing that helps me a lot. Is that like um, helping yourself get the right perspective I don't, do you understand that like getting putting things in the right um putting things in the right order like sometimes we get so caught up in something that doesn't really mean anything is that is that that's yeah, kind exactly. of where you're going with yeah. that yeah 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 exactly it's quite it's it's quite hard to explain but yeah it for sure has helped me a lot that's awesome. Uh, one thing I, I, I don't know a ton about racing, but I know um, with uh, being a race car driver, then it's, you lose more than you win. Like if you consider first place as the only win, then I don't know how many, like in, in, uh, in North America with NASCAR, there's 40 drivers. And if you win two or three times a year, that's really good. But then all those other times you're not winning. So that it's a really unique challenge. If you're playing tennis, you either win or you lose and you can have a good winning season. Can you uh, explain that more f from your, from how you, you see things? Yeah, but it's sometimes you don't really need to win to actually like win. Because sometimes you maybe have like a really bad weekend in the beginning and then you like improve a lot to the end of the weekend and only and you just gain a lot of position and that can also be like a win. So you don't always have to like win to like be happy. So you should always like you should always try to see every pos positive thing in every situation so you can always move on and 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 also also like um, learn from all the negative things as well but always think about the pos positive things because sometimes you always just end up thinking about negative things and that's not always good <laughs> <laughs> you know Jessica, I, I don't think I could have asked for a better answer because that is that is so good. You know, you take you take whatever is happening and you see the good that is happening, whether it's coming from last place in practice to finishing halfway up the field or almost all the way up the field. You know, that's man, I I love hearing that that uh you see that and you uh you work with that that that's amazing so in in europe in your racing like in wtcr um where do you see yourself going like is this a league that you can stay in for many years or what what do you see for yourself in the future like my goal has been to get to WTCR it has like been a dream to get there so right now I have like reached like my goal like my goal for last year and the years before so I'm very happy to be there but to be able to stay in WTCR I need to like um, be like a professional driver and get paid to race because it's quite expensive sport we are racing in so Somehow I need to like prove to all like the factories that I'm a really good driver and that they want to like put money on me. 
because otherwise it will be um, impossible to stay in the end because you really need a lot of budget to to be where you want to be. So I think my goal is to be a professional driver. So right now, who sponsors you right now? I have some sponsors and then I have my parents. They are like a big part of it. And also the team has put like a, a lot of money into us. So we have like a very good price to raise in WTCR, but it might not last forever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah you have to uh same as anywhere you have to perform or you don't keep moving ahead right exactly let's go back in time how did you little little jessica running around five or six years old did you know then that you wanted to race cars no i had no idea to be honest <laughs> <laughs> so how did this how did this come about Mm, like both my parents are very like interested in motorsport but none none of them have been a have been a driver but my dad he's he's been a mechanic and really likes cars so he, he has been mechanic in drag racing when he was smaller and on my mother's side my uncle is a rally driver so we have a lot of motorsport in in the family so then my my mother just so one an article in the newspaper that it was a karting school nearby so she just put me and Andreas up for it so then we tried it and then we loved it straight away so since then we have been racing <laughs> since I was eight years old since you're eight years old 16 yeah. years you've been racing yeah as a family so talk talk if you can talk a little bit about the family ties and how um how special it is to race you're not just out by yourself going racing somewhere but you are racing as a family um how is can you talk a little bit about that yeah like me and my family like my brother is also racing so we are really like connected we are always with each other since it will be different because normally one one sibling is like interesting in another sport and then you always have to split up but now both me and Andreas are like interested in the same sport so and both my parents are very interested so they always want to follow every race everywhere <laughs> doesn't matter where it is so we are very like uh, we are really like a family and our, we are really spending a lot of time with each other which is really like special and very nice so it's always a very good support <laughs> for sure. They, it has been like they, that. Yeah. Are they, um, do they push you a lot or are you pushing yourself? Mm, like they always, my, my dad always push, push us a lot, but at the same time, uh, we can only just do what our best and everyone wants our, our, us to succeed. So they always like try to do, everything they can to make us succeed so they always want to like they always want to put us like in the best car as possible to always like give us the best uh, give us the best uh, uh, material to like succeed yeah opportunity to succeed so yeah they're, they're for sure very good very a lot of help sounds like i i've heard of some fathers of racers and sometimes they're very harsh and they're very critical and uh i see i see pictures uh like i follow you on instagram that's how we first met and uh, i see pictures of um you and your family and your diff different racing pictures and stuff and uh it always seems that you are close as a family and uh, I believe I've seen, no, I'd, I've definitely seen your brother, Andreas, but uh, it doesn't seem like they're, uh, it seems like they're very good parents. That must be very special to have such good parents. Yeah, for sure. They're very good parents. They're really like trying to make us do what we want to do. So 
they're really putting a lot of effort into me and Andreas. So for sure, it's I'm very appreciated. So I'm very happy about it. So when uh, when you're feeling times that are tough, are they easy to talk to? Like if if you've yeah, had a bad day and you go back, you get out of the car, you find you family's very supportive and very helpful. Yeah, they are always very supportive. So I can always talk to them about everything. So it's very nice to have them. That's awesome. I I love to hear that. I love uh I have a bunch of kids and I that to me, it means so much to have a good connection with my children. And uh, that's something that's very, very important to me. So I appreciate seeing that. When, uh, when we talk about social media, um, obviously, as a young, young person, you, you've grown up with social media. And an older guy like me, I didn't grow up with this stuff. And you just kind of find your way through. But have you had training with with social media, what to put on posts or what not to put on posts? Like, how how have you learned how to do your your social media stuff, or have you just done it? To be honest, I haven't had any help from anyone. I just learned by myself. I realize okay. what I should put and not put. So everything I do, I do by myself. So. <laughs> I find it very interesting since I'm studying also marketing at school so I'm very interested in like social media and marketing and stuff like that so I think it's very interesting so <laughs> uh, so you do all of that yourself yeah everything because wow. <laughs> I um, on my uh, I don't know how I first saw your stuff uh, it's been a few years I think I think it was before you were in WPCR um, and, uh, I don't know, I, I, something about your social media caught my eye <laughs> and, uh, I just, I responded to you and you responded back and I was like, wow. So <laughs> you respond back to me and you have thousands of people following you. Yeah. That might I always, take I always a lot try of time to, to re respond. Yeah, I always try to respond to as many people as possible. So I always try to be nice to everyone. So. Mm. That's uh, that's pretty special. That's um, I've I've yeah, I I like that. I really appreciate that that you uh, that you do that with your fans because if you can get enough people interested in you that can help with your sponsorship too, right? For sure. It's, everything is connected. So you always need to, to show the, the, the good, good version of yourself. But I'm always like this. So it's not something I have to like, yeah, pretend or anything because I always, I'm always nice to people or try to be anyway. <laughs> you are, you, you're not putting on a knack. You, you are, presenting yourself as you are oh, i'm just being myself yeah i'm just wow. being myself um that's very very commendable yes i keep trying to say jess and you pronounce it more yes right i know but that's but that's because i can't say it you should say <laughs> like you said but i can't say it i don't know <laughs> so you say jessica yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so north of no, thousand kilometers north of Stockholm is uh, yeah. your town, Bowden. Right. Yes, exactly. So that must be that must be very close to the top of Sweden. Then is that right? Yeah, we are very close to the Arctic Circle. So, wow. So, yeah. Where the uh, sun doesn't go down much in the uh, summer and in the winter, it's dark a lot. 
Yeah, exactly. In the summer is always light, and in the and in the winter is always dark. But then we have a lot of snow, and the snow is white, which makes it lighter. So it's not that that dark as you think it is. To be yeah, to be honest. You uh, when you're when you're racing, you're racing around Europe. Uh, what are the challenges you find as a somebody that comes from the far north? Is there anything that sticks out to you when you're down in Europe and you're away from your home country? Uh, anything sticks out to you about how it is racing down in Europe? Mm, to be honest, I have raced a lot in Europe, even in karting. So for me, it's quite used to it now. So yeah. I started to race in Europe when I was 12 years old. So I started a lot very early. So for me, wow. it's like normal to be honest to race in Europe. It's, it's more normal to race in Europe than to race in Sweden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, how did you learn English so well? Mm, I was very bad in school. But then I started to race for an uh, English team in karting. So then I learned by just listening to them, to be honest. So after that, <laughs> okay. I, I had to speak English. So, yeah. When you're 12 years old, it's mm -hmm. easier to pick up on it and figure it out, right? When you're young, it's easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to... Uh, have um, people tell me a funny experience or a different experience from a trip you've made, whether it's going from one race to another or whatever it is, is there some, is there some trip that really stands out to you because of something that happened on the trip, anything really big or anything? If you tell people about traveling, what is the one story that comes to mind? I thought about that, but then I saw the Schumacher documentary yesterday. And then I was thinking about when I got this autograph. But that was actually when I was testing on a karting track in Belgium. Just a normal day. And then he just showed up testing as well, Michael Schumacher. And he's like my really? biggest idol. So then I got it. Yeah, and then I got his autograph, and now I still have it like at home, at home now in my apartment. So I was, was thinking about it yesterday. So that was actually something that is, nice. was quite quite nice. But he uh, just showed up like a normal day. <laughs> so you're just out testing your cart, and here comes Michael Schumacher. Wow. Yeah. Was what was he exactly. was he testing, or <laughs> did he just show up there? No, he was testing as well. He was there. He was going to test karting as well. Yes, like I, so. It was quite. I was just on the right place at the right time. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that would so, be yeah. a. That'd be a. That's a big. Uh, a big thing. So. Mm -hmm. VIP, do you have a question for uh, Jessica? Yeah, I know we've talked about the future of your driving, but. Um, if you do become a professional driver, how long, what, what is the future after that? Do you just want to stay in driving until you retire? Do you want to teach other um, young women or people how to drive? What, what do you think the next step after you do this will be? Or it, do you have a um, contingency plan for your future if you don't become a driver? Not really, to be honest. I just take every day as it comes. And mm -hmm. for sure, if you say I stop driving and I can't do it anymore, then I would like to teach other drivers to like, yeah, uh, become what I have, have done. Like it's not so many female drivers right now, mm -hmm. but that's something I would like to try to change somehow and try to help them move forward because it's it's for sure possible yeah so it's but i haven't really thought about thought about it so much since i asked i tried to live like 
fair and love. Yeah, I understand. I'm the same way. <laughs> Just enjoy, enjoy enjoy where you are every day, right? Yeah. Yeah. You you have a lot of fans that are little girls that are just so excited to see another uh, lady in, in a, or to see a lady racing? Yeah, it's quite a lot of people following me. So, and I try to like be a good role model to them to like try to show them that everything is possible. So but I hope I inspire a lot of more women up anyway. So but I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So in, in racing, um, there really shouldn't be any barrier whether you're a woman or a man, right? Like, there it should. No. There should be no barrier. There should be. There's no reason. I, I in my family, a couple of my girls are some of the best drivers, and it's not just because oh, they're a woman, they're not as good. That's crazy. You know, I always tried to teach my girls. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You can be just as good as anybody else. You just have to pay attention to all the little things. Same as everybody else, right? It's funny. Yeah, my exactly. girls were uh, my girls were on her on their way home from work one day and they had a flat tire and they're out changing the tire and guys stop by and they're like, Oh, should we help you? Should we help you? And they're like, No, nah, we got this. <laughs> they were changing their own <laughs> tire on the side of the road and you know, they knew what to do. They yeah, weren't afraid nice. of getting dirty. And yeah, yeah, they're pretty cool. My girls are pretty yeah, cool. That's cool. Any uh, final thoughts, Jess, and uh, on anything, any mm -hmm. encouragement you want to give to uh, other people to reach their own goals? Yes, make sure to believe believe in yourself and and know that you can do whatever you want to do so i think that's what i'm doing and i've gone quite far so you just have to believe you can and you can yeah that's uh, awesome advice believe in yourself and just put in the work for it i appreciate your yeah. time i uh, thank you for coming on with us and spending time i know it's a busy schedule for you and busy times i wish you all the best uh, for the rest of this year and uh, for every year to come that you live each day and enjoy each day and uh, see the beauty and the love everywhere all the time and uh, enjoy all the little things. So thanks to all of our uh, people that yeah. watch and listen. Thank you uh, on behalf of uh, Bridget, Size Matters and VIP. Thank you very much. Remember to uh, like and share and follow along. Have a good day, guys.